Ah, yes, it's working. I think, right? Phew, that was close. Regard my surroundings, opulent. And you can see the, um, this is the Phoenix International Airport. So you should be able to see aeroplanes coming and going. I'll sit to the side here so that you can witness them all. How's everyone doing? Good day to you. Jimmy Tumbles, no, you weren't the first person, but you were close, second person, I think. Um, hi, Jeff, Gemma, uh, blah, blah, Astrid, Joe, Claire, James, so many folks. How's it going? Uh, Stephen says, amazing in San Diego, seeing you in Santa Ana. Can't wait. Have we played in Santa Ana before? I'm wondering if it's a, a place that where we played and it was a cinema or something a few years ago. Remind me, if you can. Yes, Seattle should be a good laugh, shouldn't it? Um, watch out for the racist cops. That's good advice. Thank you. Um, yeah, this doesn't look like low stuff, does it? Look. It's really nice here, though. Sun was shining. Went to the pool yesterday. It was all good. So, anyone got any questions relating to... Hey, Karen. Hey, everyone. Um, thanks, Wendy. I'm looking forward to uh, going to Canada. It's going to be interesting. Um, thank you. My shirt loves you as well, St um, Sarah. <laughs> Craig asks, do I have perfect pitch? Um, no, it's just the way I walk. Is that, is that one, guys? No. How do American audiences compare to UK? Um, well, so far they've been a little bit smaller. Um, and there's more of them, if you know what I mean. Love you, Justin. Come to Bakersfield. We were just we drove through Bakersfield and Delano, um, all those cool places. That Bakersfield's in between LA and Las Vegas, isn't it? It's nice anyway. In the Death Valley, of course, lovely. Um, so happy when you were announced for download. Thanks. I was happy too, and our accountants happy. Um, what makes a good acoustic guitar? I'm not really an acoustic guitar specialist, if I'm honest. Um, I think you do have to hold it in your hand, though, and see how it feels, because they differ greatly, just like electric guitars, really. But, um, yeah, I would say... <laughs> what are you laughing at, Karen? <laughs> um, you need to hold it in your hands, that's all. Joe says, will we ever get to see you in your pants in the UK? Well, I think the pants encore has become... Basically, um, sorry for the uh, American uh, folks who are on here. Um, when, when I say pants, I mean underpants. Uh, what do you call them? St tight, tight, little, small pants. <laughs> small pants. Underpants, the undergarments, you know. Hey, Sawyer, I'm doing well, thank you. Hope you're doing well too. Um, Astrid, how's the weather? I'll tell you what. I love it. It's awesome out there. Um, I, but in these desert climbs, I've been doing like runs in the morning, and I found that uh, my lips have become very, very dry. I didn't really notice the desertness of it all because there's, you know, running water and so on. But I tell you what, when you're out there jogging, it's it's <sighs> takes it out of you. Um, so I bought a chapstick this morning. Yes, um, yeah, I've only just started exposing myself on stage. It's, it's nice because I feel seen, you know. I didn't realise that that's what I needed, but it is, apparently. Boxers and briefs equals underpants. That's quite right. Thanks for the uh, clarification. Yeah. Tighty whities. That's what I was trying to think of, Scott. That's the expression, yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Nikki's laughing because I said little small pants. <laughs> yep, little blue pants. Sometimes it's little blue pants. I didn't pack any little blue pants for this tour, actually. I've got some... Um, little black pants and I've got some uh, little, uh, I don't know, animal print pants, I suppose, just for that exotic, you know. I like to look, look a bit exotic. Gemma asks, how do you have the energy to do all that you do? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think I might be a little bit on the, um, what's it called again, the AD, one of the spectrums, not the spectrum, but the, the one where you've got, somebody said I probably had that 
a hyperactive disorder of some sort. But I don't see it as a disorder. It's, an, it's the opposite of a disorder. It's an order. And that's a, an order. What's your opinion on the band name Doc Freighter? I think it's all right. It's all right. What does it, what does it mean? Have I missed a, a pun or something? Is it... The Ark, yes, Jim. I love I love the Ark, actually. New LA venue, yes. Um, a more intimate venue, which I think makes more sense. We had a choice between playing in a place that's a quarter full or doing a vibey, sweaty show. And we're always going to go with a vibey, sweaty show. I hope you guys can make it. It'll be much more fun, I think. Um, Gucci thongs, yeah. Okay, well, good point, Sarah. Um, basically... Any pair of pants that has a really, really obnoxious kind of brand logo on the front of it, I'm, I'm down to wear that. Um, Robert says, Robert's asking the, the important question. He says, I've had a small piece of Battenberg. What's your favourite cake? Um, I like carrot cakes, I think, because carrots are really good for you. You can see in the dark if you've eaten enough of them. Um, not too sweet as well. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Little Blue Pants, a new song title. Could be, could be. Todd's uh, invested in the super chat. Well done, Todd. No need for you to do that, but thank you. Um, where's Todd? I will always, I will always um, prioritise super chat. <laughs> you haven't even asked a question. <laughs> Todd, you've just given me a dollar and you didn't ask a question. <laughs> Foolish man. Oh, I've got a question for you, Todd. Have you still got that brilliant moustache, that sort of moustache What do you call that one again? It's, is that called a, a Fu Manchu, maybe? Um, I haven't listened to Gnala yet. Nick, thank you for the uh, tip. Um, Elaine, Elaine Staley, I don't know what that is. I can't believe you went from 40 to 100 so fast. I don't know what you mean. Sweaty shows are the best, yeah. Um, so Mr. Lee says they saw Ricky Warwick doing one on Thursday and it was bloody amazing. Well, I hope it's the same for you when you come see us. It'll be like a 700 capacity and with a bit of luck we'll get somewhere near selling it out, I think. Should be a laugh. Um, Dean says, thanks for Belfast. My pleasure, I really enjoyed it. Martin asks if I like Radiohead. Yes, I love Radiohead. Um, Favourite rapper? Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. Can I include people who do dramatic monologues? Um, if so, I would say Peter Wingard or um, obviously William Shatner. Uh, what city am I in? I think I'm in... Um, I'm actually in between Tempe, Scottsdale and... Uh, Phoenix, because this is the airport hotel. That's why you can see the runway, and sometimes you'll notice uh, a plane landing behind me. But we're off to uh, we're playing in Tempe tonight, which will be a really good laugh, I think. Uh, what's my opinion on Alice Cooper? I think he's a legend, and he's uh, he's one of the reasons why we wanted to work with. Um, uh, Bob Ezrin, the producer Bob Ezrin, because uh, Bob Ezrin uh, rustled the kids up and uh, wrangled them uh, for schools out, and we needed kids for our Christmas song. So, so Alice Cooper was actually instrumental in, in us doing that. Also, we supported Alice Cooper in 19, in two thousand and three on his Bare Bones or Back to Basics No Frills tour. Um, what else? And and also with the Hollywood Vampires as well a few years ago. Love that guy, and he's he's been a real friend to the band. So, a legend. Uh, James Goodwin has invested in Super Chat, and he says, uh, "Would be great to see you do a Rides Again episode on the Mysterines." Oh, never heard of that band. It sounds like a cross between um, the Mysterons, weren't they? Were they the baddies in Captain Scarlet? Mysterons. Um, and also Listerine, which is the um, mouthwash of choice for people in the 1800s, I think. Up and coming band from Liverpool, great. Thank you for the tip, we'll uh, check them out. I'll ask my producer to look into it. Uh, current favorite song to listen to or play? 
I'm really enjoying uh, Lewis Cole at the moment. I know I'm a bit late to that party, but there's a, a song on um, the Time, his album Time, called um, Weird Part of the Night, which I really love. It talks about being creative when most people are asleep. There's a great line in it where he says, it's hard to be a fake when there's no one else awake. Because it's true, isn't it? Whenever you're being inauthentic, it's always for other people's benefit, isn't it? When if you're just being yourself and doing your own stuff, it's cool. Uh, nice one, nice one guys. Um, a 20th anniversary tour for Permission to Land in 2023. Very likely Sahara B. We're looking into things like that. And more on that soon, so please keep coming back. The link's in the description or wherever you'll find it. Um, had the darkness played in Anchorage? I'm not sure. Will you be coming around to Denver this year? Or is it the one and only American round? No, we're, this is the only time We'll be in America this year, I think, unless something comes up at the last minute, which might, may or may not be in Denver, as it turns out. Um, Kevin says that the Novo is the worst place to see a show in L.A. Well, don't worry, we're not going to be doing that this time, so we'll go somewhere else. Why, why is it so bad, Kevin? Uh, let me know in the remarks. <laughs> um, Noel's really hoping that the darkness will be playing Speed of the Night Time. I love that song, too. You have to come and find out. Um... Oh, can I do a collaboration with Donny Benet? I think he's a genius. I'd love to do that, actually. Um, any special plans if I reach... When, sorry, when I reach... Once I reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube? Well, I think that will be party, party day. Um, yeah, party, party day. Not quite sure. Mylene's asking, favourite female drummer? Well, I would say that's going to be... Uh, Katie Heron from uh, the Dead Deads, I would think. How do you not know what city we're in? We're not in a city. I'm in between them. I, there's a, there's, I'm in between three different cities. I always know. Do you play Street Spirit much? No, but our lighting designer asked yesterday if we could put it in a set, so we'll see. Can you give us a quick guttural death call scream? Thanks, Adam. I'd love to do that, but I, I need to warm up a little bit for the gig tonight and I'm going to do some... Beautiful singing. Noel saying again, I hope the darkness will be playing Speed of a Night Time on tour. He loves that song. Uh, I think he might have said it like four or five times. Um, can't wait to see you and the guys in Asbury, says Regina. I'm looking forward to that one too. Ultra World, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it, mate. Um, are you busing or flying between gigs, asks Neil. Have you worked out the mileage? Uh, I was just looking at a couple of the drives. It's all drives. Um, we flew into L.A., Drove to San Diego, and, and we've been driving to all of them since then. Um, Jess asked if I'm getting a tan. Yep, I'm getting a tan. Just by running, actually. I, I run with my T-shirt tied around my head so, so I don't get a sunstroke. But I get a lovely uh, red, reddish tan. Um, oh, favourite AHA tune? Um, I really liked Crying in the Rain, which is the cover of the... Uh, I think it was an Everly Brothers song that they covered. Beautiful. Oh, you are here. Nice, yes. Um, Noel, I'm going to have to ask you to stop putting that same thing on. Uh, John Hawkins says, nice name. Hello, John. Distant cousin, I expect. Three ideal dinner guests, dead or alive. Wonderful, Kelsey. Thank you. Um, I'm going to choose alive, people. Um, I would go for... get back to you on that. I never had a dinner party, so I wouldn't know. Um, did I work with Ezrin? Yeah, we worked with Ezrin on a few different things, actually. He, um, he mixed a lot of hot cakes. Um, executive produced uh, one of the songs off that called um, Every Inch of You. Uh, whenever we need any sort of advice, we go to him and he sort of helps us with to sonically get the best out of our self-produced records. And also he produced our Christmas song, which was a big hit in the UK. Um, do you play much slide guitar? Oh, yes, Troy. So Troy's heard my slide solo on the, the Darby Todd album. Um, yeah, I do play a little bit. I actually ta taught myself how to play slide in the lockdown. I never really did it before, but uh, now I can play it with uh, sort of regular tuning guitar, E, A, D, G, B, E, I think, um, which I think is the most fun, really. Um, Thanks for observing that, it's great. 
Uh, I haven't dived into the ghost albums yet, actually. I've been listening to something that um, me and my daughter are really into, Lewis Cole, at the moment. So we'll, once we've passed that phase, I'm sure we'll get into ghost next. What's the Darkness song you are really proud of and the one you didn't feel hit the spot? Um, I'm really proud of um, a song called uh, Confirmation Bias, because I just think it's a really silly and fun lyric. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff on the sort of reunion record, Hot Cakes, which I don't think hits the spot because it's sort of, um, you can tell that we're a little bit tentative with each other and the sort of relationships were very sort of fragile and precious and you can't really collaborate authentically when you're sort of worried about upsetting people. You've got to be able to just, you know, upset everybody to get the right results and songs benefit from that sort of conflict, I think. So if you're shy of it, then you're, you're you know, not allowing a song to be developed in the in the best way, I don't think. Um, Rundgren gave me a ten dollar super chat. Thanks, Rundgren. I really appreciate that. Nice one, mate. Um, ooh. <laughs> I am um, G Hote says I'm going to the Portland show with my grandma. Can you please keep on your pants? <laughs> um. The pants stay on. I don't take. I don't. I'm not fully naked at the end of this of the set, um, because I've heard stories about how people can get arrested, and I don't. I don't want. I don't want to be arrested in America, or anywhere else, but particularly America. Um, syntax syntax error says uh, hi, Justin. Do you get time to write songs whilst you're on tour? Uh, not really. Well, I haven't so far. Um, I've just been sort of mucking about, really, just relaxing in between shows. There's a few. There's, a, there's one little run where I've got four in a row, and that's going to be quite difficult for the voice. So I have to sort of look after myself and try and relax in between. James Adcock says, "Aren't you a millionaire?" I don't know. You'd have to Google that, my friend. Um, hi, Justin. I'd love you to review the new Eric Gales track. Such amazing solos. P.S. I asked you about Oswick Tentacles recently. I do their merch on the tours. They are close friends. Brilliant. Love your music. Thank you, Ultra World. Um, yes, um, I, d I know, I remember Osric Tentacles. They are sort of, um, they were around in the early 90s, weren't they? Rush Influences in new album. Rush Influences in every album, Yvonne, you know that. Um, who writes the solos for Darkness? Uh, Solo and Love's Only Feeling, best things I've heard since Songs of Swing at Live Aid. <laughs> well, I think me and Dan write them together, really. Um, some of them... Uh, if Dan plays them, it's his department. If I play them, it's my department. We're the ones, you know, because individually we're the ones that have to play them live. Um, censor. Censor. That really sounds familiar. That's quite, is that an old band? Sorry, Warchild's asking if I if I if I've heard the music from the London band Censor. Can't remember. Do you own a Walkman? I used to, David. I used to. Have you ever met any of the surviving members of Finn Lizzy? Well, yeah, I mean, I know they've had a lot of members over the year. And, uh, yeah, we've met a few of them. Um, where do you get your ideas from? <laughs> Just anywhere. The ether, each other. You know, we're inspired by conversations, inspired by looking into our hearts and looking out the window, scratching our asses. It's everywhere if you look for it. K-Kids gave me a super chat. Thank you, K-Kids. Appreciate it. Biggest fashion inspiration, Frankie Poulain from The Darkness. What a guy. Nice one, Neil. Super chats. You said keeping it real. Thank you, Neil. Neil's keeping it real. Slide in sticky situation. Yeah, that's a, that's a slide solo. Uh, can you tell if you all appear on Guitar Show in Birmingham? Well, actually, the guys from Laney who... Um, hey, hey, Anna, by the way. The guys in Laney um, have uh, asked if I'll do something like that, but I'm not sure if it was that particular one that, that uh, they were talking about, but they'll, they'll, I'll probably show up and de demo the Laney amps because uh, they want to um, they want to do a Justin Hawkins signature amp, which will be the JH3000. Um, J. Michael, have you ever seen Black Shuck? Awesome. Well, thanks, J. Michael. Black Shuck is... Uh, if I had seen Black Shuck, I think something really terrible would have happened to me. Um, I think it's important, that, that, that myth mythological uh, beast is important for ill fortune. Somebody in your family dies whenever you see this 
mysterious black dog. Um, I did, because ha- I, I used to do a bit of art as a younger man, and I had some uh, a piece of art in an exhibition that was inside Blythburgh Church. And um, when you go to Blythburgh Church, they show you the the the, um, the door that was apparently attacked by the dog, and um, it uh, has a black scratch mark where the hellhound attacked it. Ah, oh, excellent. Bruce says, um, <laughs> hoping you'll play Speed of the Night Time. Have the dead deads been behaving? Unlikely. Bootleg dead. Uh, bootleg dead. Yeah, uh, they've been behaving themselves perfectly, actually. Very, very respectful. In fact, things like the COVID um, strategy, which is an important part of it, they've been observing. Um, really appreciate them for that. And then, obviously, we made friends with those guys on the on the KISS cruise, and um, I'm really happy that we're out with them because it's just a brilliant time all the time. Lovely people, lovely stru- infrastructure around them. It's just good vibes, you know. It's happy days. Thank you guys for the great time in San Diego, says Jorembe's homeboy. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Roy Sharpton and Savage Albatross says, are you doing okay on your travels? I go nuts with too much hotel living. Can't wait for the show tonight, Eric. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. I'll see you in the front row, I trust. Um, yes. Uh, actually, I'm doing fine. I just need to make sure I get enough sleep in between shows. That's really all it is. Um, Kelsey says, writing some songs and finding it hard to finish and 90% done. Any tips regarding lyric composure? Yes, Kelsey, send them to me and I'll finish them for you for a small fee. No, just kidding. Um, for a small percentage. Not kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. Kelsey, write to me. Be all right. Um, Rundgren says, uh, super chat. Tip, just 10 bucks from Rundgren. Thank you, Rundgren. That's so kind of you. Uh, Karen has made an important point here. Um, relating to... Uh, the person who said earlier that they're going to bring their grandma to Portland, um, Karen says maybe grandma wants the pants off. That is a good point. Uh, I'll be adding a, a pants-free tier to my uh, Patreon. I won't, but the Patreon links in the bio, all that stuff. Um, but I think there's probably links to um, getting tickets for these darkness shows as well if you're uh, that way inclined. Oh, Todd says I'm looking for a vegan restaurant in Chicago for you. Thanks, mate. That'd be great, actually. The Kings of Ukulele says, Justin, you are a genius. In- that's really kind of you, Kings of Ukulele. Thanks. Synth tattoos must mean you have a few dad rock keyboard fe- featured tune or any genre, I guess. See you in Toronto. Yes, Jeff, I, I actually have a, a huge collection of old, old synthesizers, none of which are currently working. Um, they're just lovely things to have around, though. Neil says, hi from Lerstoft. Hi back. How are you doing? If Queen has you to become their front man for a tour, would you accept? Well, depends entirely on my availability, uh, the, the keggy. Um, and also, they've got Adam Lambert, so I don't think they need somebody like me. It'd be all right. But thanks for coming. Should I get the Queen silhouettes tattooed on my knuckles in homage to my favourite past and current bands? Um, Fabian, I think this should answer your question. It's the best tattoo I ever had. So, yeah, go for it. Uh, the first says, you influenced my tenor vocals for my own music. Well, I appreciate that, the first. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, do you remember the Crocodile Rock guitar shop? <laughs> it was shit. <laughs> that is a great, great comment. Thanks, Jake. Um, no, I don't actually. Where was it? Top of town? Let me know. Um... Can't see you guys on tour this time, unfortunately. Come back to New Orleans. Yeah, we'd love to come come back to um, New Orleans, Noel. I, I really enjoyed it there. I remember last time we played, and, and uh, the man on the door said, uh, thank you, uh, thank you for playing. Um, he said, enjoy my city. I think that's, that's the vibe in New Orleans. It's always, always very welcoming, isn't it? Ah, oh, sense of play with Osrix. That's a good coincidence. Kev says, where do you get your clothes? All over the place. Um, all over the place, wherever I see them. Um, but the ones, the things that are custom made are made by Angela Bright, usually, who uh, she does all my uh, stage wear and some of my uh, street wear. Not the pants, though. I, I just buy expensive pants. Harry says, is it true that Alan McGee turned down the chance to sign the darkness? No, it's not true, actually, Harry. Alan McGee made us an offer. We turned him down, actually. So thanks for coming. 
Are you a Sex Pistols fan, Justin? I am a Sex Pistols fan, actually. Um, thanks, Darren. I certainly am. Brought up on Sex Pistols, fun enough. Are you going to do some sightseeing in Milwaukee? I can be your tour guide if you want. You're the best band on the planet. Much love from Aileen. Thank you, Aileen. Um, I'm not sure yet. It depends what time you get in there. Have you of your band ever worked with Al Yankovic? No, but I quite enjoyed um, his contribution to that. What was that series? Um, not Phineas and Ferb, but the follow-up to Phineas and Ferb when he played one of the characters. I've forgotten what it was called now. I like him there. Happy having you here on YouTube. Thanks, Adriana. I like being here as well. It's fun. Do you record your albums with the same guitars you play live shows? Asks Doc Eyebrow. Um, yeah, um, sometimes there's a black one that I use for solos in the studio because it always has the same kind of... It really has a sort of unique squeak to certain parts of the fretboard and it always sounds the best. Shireen June, when you take in the live chat on tour, <laughs> what, would it just be me sitting in a room and then you guys come in and ask questions? Is that even a sustainable business model? Can we do that? I'll do it. Hour and a half? What? Ha really? Who would be interested in that? Not many people, I don't think. But if you can reach just one person, then it's all worthwhile, isn't it? Do you ever play Fender Jaguar guitars? Asks Jim. Funnily enough, I used to have a Jag. Um, I used to use it for all the sort of um, all the stuff I was doing for adverts and things. Usually, I used my Jag. It's quite versatile tone. It's quite versatile tonally, but I find that the bridge and the little sort of saddles uh, on the bridge aren't very reliable so as soon as you wear, start wearing it and playing it properly in a loud band situation strings just fly off and and then so you end up replacing bits of it and it's, then it stops being original and if you had an old fat jag like my one was then you, you kind of want to keep it original really so in their in their original form i think jacking was just a little bit difficult to use if you're an energetic performer Could you lend me 10 quid? I'll give it to you back. I'll give it back at the end of the week. Definitely bouncing hearts. Definitely. <sighs> Opinion on the strokes. Um, I, I actually really like bits of what I've heard. Um, we used to have good fun with them guys. On, uh, we were on tour in Australia together um, years ago. And uh, we, had, we had fights and we had parties and loads of loads of fun stuff happened. That's a real band, rock, proper rock and roll band. <laughs> Regardless of what you think of the music, they've definitely got the attitude and they're fun to hang around. Um, Jacob says, hey Justin, I appreciate your insight on music. It's a refreshing change and you always seem to find positive things to take away from everything. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. Um, what do I think about The Doors? I think The Doors is something that you really, really love at a certain point in your life. Like, I loved them when I was, um, I suppose, adolescent, I think I would say. And I think the poetry stopped working for me when I sort of got into my 20s, I suppose. Um, but yeah, um, I love bits of it. I do. It's, it's fun to listen to even now. And they made a lot of music in a really short time as well. That's, that's admirable. A laney head with three independent channels would be lovely. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I think that's what I'm using at the moment is a bit like a laney uh, iron heart is from their current range, but they've you know they've dressed it up nice to make it look like I designed it. And we'll do a special one that's more to my specifications. And me and uh, Ian Norfolk will uh, work with Laney to get it to get it going. Um, Paul G says Black Sabbath. Thanks, Paul G. Indeed, Black Sabbath. I agree with you. Um, hi, Justin. Did you and your band ever think about considering green touring, reducing greenhouse gas emissions while on the road? Yes. Um, I think that's a, something that we need to explore. I, I think for us, at our level, it's really, really difficult because there's a hell of a lot of driving involved. We, we don't have the means to, to do things and plant, plant things. Um, we don't, we're not making enough money on the tour, basically, to do that. Um, those, Karen's saying, ask grandma. I think we do need to ask grandma. Um, where are you, were you guys able to do anything in San Diego? Um, yeah, we took a job down to the um, 
you know, they've got that sort of maritime museum down at the bay and then ran back. And I had, uh, had a lovely vegan, a Mexican meal and a really nice vegan restaurant around the corner from the venue. It was great. Really, really cool. Um, when you played on that Brit Awards with that silver sparkle Les Paul custom and went up on the podium tapping away, truly awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Karen says that her mum is 75 and obsessed with me. So, and then she says, just saying. And she's, she would be keen to see me without my pants. Astrid says, come to Mexico. Not necessarily to play and sing, but just because I'll enjoy the weather. Yeah, thanks. I'd love, like to do that, actually. Um. Ah. Knaif says, how hard is it to get songs into computer games? Um, I think it's, uh, it's an area of the music trade which, um, you know, record labels and publishing companies have people that they employ just to try and find those opportunities. It's called synchronization opportunities. It means your music is synchronized with the image or, you know, some other for, uh, art form or media form. And usually it's sort of TV programs, films, and now to a greater degree, um, computer games as well. A lot of the time, though, they'll have a song in mind and they'll come, they'll come, um, they'll come and look and ask you for it. Uh, but there are people that go looking for that sort of stuff um, for you because it's an important part of the an important way to create revenue for songwriters and, and bands. Casey says, can I borrow your Charvel or maybe a white Les Paul? You can't borrow a white Les Paul. No, nobody gets to touch those. You can borrow a Charvel one day. Um, oh, yes, Andy says that, um, Andy Uberalis says, thanks for that video on Upper Crust. I loved touring with them. Shame that your concert here in Berlin was cancelled until next year. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Andy. I was looking forward to playing all over Germany, actually. It's always a good laugh. Um, never mind. Uh, J. Michael says, Super Chat. Thanks, J. Michael. Appreciate that. Um, opinion on the strokes. I've already given an opinion on the strokes, Gavin, but uh, thank you. Um, oof, this is a really important question. Aidan Cap says... Hey Justin, who wins in a bare knuckler? Neil Diamond or Don Henley? <sighs> mm, that's a good question. I think I got a feeling Neil Diamond would fight dirty, you know. When you see Don Henley, obviously he's got a lot of uh, lateral motion and these these muscles are gonna be quite well developed because of his you know, he will have he will have been drumming, you know, to get the blood up as well. So he's probably he's probably fit, but what I know about Neil Diamond is when he performs, he has a small table beside him with a, a glass of water. And I expect he'll sort of take a sip calmly, spit into Don Lim Henley's face and then glass him. Game over. There's not much you can do about that. Um, obviously, nobody wants to see that. I'd, I'd prefer to see them collaborating on something musical. But uh, were it to go ugly like that, I've got a feeling Neil's got some nasty tricks up his sleeve. Um... Where do you think pop music will be going with instruments vibe now? And do you think a simple acoustic and vocal thing could take the charts much like Adele does piano and vocal hits? Um, I don't know. It's, I don't like trying to sort of predict. It's kind of like an A&R man's job to, to imagine what, what most people are going to enjoy. I always think that something comes along, though, which is, can be a great song and doesn't quite fit in. Um, and I think that like the rest of it, like whatever's happening in pop and however it evolves or devolves, um, there'll always be a song that comes along and wipes it all away. You know, there was that song by um, Gautier, wasn't there? The, the one about um, somebody that I used to know. I mean, it didn't quite sound like all the other pop music around and, and it, it, it elevated itself above all of that shit, all that noise. and just because it was a great song. And so I think the whole purpose of 
pop music is to just create this sludgy trench of bullshit that doesn't make doesn't mean anything it's just noise you know it's just shit music for people who don't like music to just dance to because it's just oh it's new oh look yeah, it's new I haven't heard this one before I'm going to dance to it because it's new and then something amazing comes along and none of that stuff matters anymore um, as it evolves and, and changes into whatever s s trench full of shit it happens to be it's just it's it's not relevant and it's nothing to worry about really it's, it's not for us you know people who like music don't care about pop it's just it can do what it wants the people who do love music just just wait because the good stuff comes and then people like us hear it and then that's all that matters you can a and r something to death and you can imagine what people are going to like but at the end of the day if something's great it's fucking great and you can't deny it can we smash up the hotel room on live, live stream? Brilliant idea, Panama Jack. You know what? If I was in a less expensive hotel, we'd do that. That's a really great idea. I'd need a few more super chats to cover the uh, expense, though. Um, what brands have you done ad music for? Asks Dandy. Um, a lot. I did HSBC, The Bank, um, Mars Bars, Tango, the soft drink, um, Glavar, Iron Brew, Pop Stars, Children's Tax Credit, which was a campaign for the government, um, the Church of England, I did two things for them. Um, this uh, a gay, um, a, cha a charity that uh, educates, educated gay men about safe sex called Rubber Stuffers. I did a cinema advert for those guys. Lots of things and some TV programs and other things that are actually top secret. Lots of stuff, though. Ever considered working with Steve Lukather? He's a stunning guitarist. Yeah, I love Steve, actually. Um, we've, we met him when we played with Toto in, in Chelsea a few years ago, and he was so funny. But, you know, those things, I don't like forcing those issues. You know, if, if it feels natural to work with somebody, then that's great. Otherwise, no. Don't get a mastery bridge, get a stay trim. OK, thanks, Jake. Good, good advice. Opinion on the vinegar strokes. I don't know what that is. Uh, James says, this town ain't big enough for the both of us, which is not actually the title. The title is, this town ain't big enough for both of us. The the is sung on the second chorus in the original and every chorus in my version, but in fact, it's not the title. Um, Um, Rungren says, look at me, look me up on the rumble when you get a chance to calm down. I'd put out one song a week. Good idea. Okay, cool. Re respect and appreciation. Also, I know how to super chat now. <laughs> Evidently you do. Thanks, Rungren. Appreciate that. Judas Priest. Love Judas Priest. Oh, my God. I met, um, uh, what's his name? What's this Judas Priest's name? Oh, fuck, I've forgotten his name now. Hang on. Rob Halford. Um, when... I think I was, it might have been when I was presenting the uh, Kerrang Awards, or it might have been the year before, but he gave me a big kiss on the mouth, big sloppy kiss on the mouth. It was great. It was like, he's such a legend. I mean, and a great kisser. What can I tell you? <laughs> okay, Vex Vexion says, Hey, Justin, can you please listen to more Bring Me The Horizon tracks, preferably the ones, uh, the ones from 2013? Just so you can make a more solid opinion on them, as the single you listen to is very different from the usual. Yeah, okay, Vexion, totally, I will. It's interesting, though, isn't it? Because it was kind of like um, I did make some observations about their sort of credentials as a pop, you know, as pop writers. And then next thing you know, after all the shit that I got for that, they're writing with um, Ed Sheeran, which is the ultimate pop writer. Um, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I hope, I hope you guys appreciate that. Anyway, um, a up, Justin, you sexy beast. Just learning one of your finest. Thanks, Griff. Enjoy it, please. Um, was the download pilot an option for... What? Download pilot an option for... See you. Ah. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Pete, but yeah, I look forward to see you at download. Did you ever play the Brickmakers? Ah, oh, I don't think we played it as the Darkness, but I've played there before in one of my old, old bands years ago, and I think I was about 16. Uh, I mean, I was 18. Um, 
do you ever ever use a demo or ever use or demo a Spark amp? What's it? Uh, I think my brother has Silver Sun pickups. Uh, I have fond memories of the Silver Sun pickups, actually. Do I like Matt Berry's work musically? Yes, there was one about um, falling into some agricultural machinery that I really enjoyed. Um, and obviously, I really like um, one track. Is it One Track Lover? Um, from uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Any thoughts on Charlie Watts? Sadly missed. Um, we played with uh, the Stones a few times. Um, and um, <laughs> I, I loved him actually in particular he was really friendly towards us and came and had a laugh with us um, which we weren't expecting you know we didn't expect to get anywhere near them but he was the one that was hanging out the most um, Robert says are you jet lagged what are you doing for 100k subs well I don't know if I'm still jet lagged I'm getting used to it now but um, we'll do some sort of party I'm not sure how many sub subscribers I have at the moment I'll ask um, opinions on George Harrison's solo career? Love. Love it. I always play uh, uh, Got My Mind Set On You from uh, Cloud9. Um, but I love all of it, really. Thoughts on the lemon twigs? That's one of the things I need to cover, actually. Thanks, Jed, the humanoid. Um, a few people have asked me about that. Um, Rhiannon says, are you a fan of The Damned? Yes, I used to love The Damned, actually. Um... Speed uh, people doing repeat, repeat messages. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Sorry, guys. Have you ever had to leave the stage to do a poo? <laughs> Asks Alan Hindman, asking the, the important questions. And also in the super chat as well. I appreciate that. Thanks, mate. Um, no, I think it's a little bit like... Um, I don't know, I suppose it's like, um, you do see some endurance runners, don't you, that have to do a poop somewhere along the, the way. But I think any sort of bowel evacuation seems to happen before the show, and then you're off, off and running. Don Henley is, uh, Robert Shaw says, Don Henley is Rick Beato's nemesis, so Neil Diamond would have Beato in his corner. Um, oh shit, that's a good point. But I don't know. So what would Beato do? Just sort of say encouraging stuff. Um, I don't think Neil Diamond needs that. It's not gonna. It's, it won't go beyond one round because it'll just be, as I said before, glass to the jugular. What? Suz me MCK says saw a cover band today. They laughed at our request to cover a darkness song. How dare they? They're just frightened. Some people laugh when they're when they're afraid. You know, that's just a it's a defense mechanism. Um, how will your live music? How will your music live on being played live? Or is that the plan? <laughs> yeah. Well, if the cover band that you saw um, is afraid to cover Darkness song, then you know they can fuck off, can't they? Um, considered writing a musical? Asks Ryan. But with four question marks, yeah. Um, I wrote a musical when I was at college, actually. It, it wasn't very good. Um, uh, what's your opinion of Mana Skin, and do you think Elvis is still alive? Um, I'm actually sort of um, becoming familiar with more of Mana Skin's work, and I'm really enjoying uh, certain aspects of it. Um, I think they're, they're so young, and they're, they're, they're in development, and really, really exciting, and they don't give a fuck, they just want to rock. So it's good stuff, you know. Um, is Elvis still alive? <sighs> no, I, no. Maybe, I don't know. I've never seen anybody. I mean, I think if you have a, a property like Graceland and you like to celebrate yourself to that degree, I don't think fake, faking your death is what you would do. I don't think that's the choice you would make. What do you think? Um, no Dave Simpson on YouTube if no gotta check him out okay I'm gonna check out Dave Simpson thank you Gavin appreciate that um, when I hear heart explodes 
when I heard Hart explain for the, sorry, visit hole, <laughs> visit hole, is that actually the whole tourist board? When I hear heart explodes for the first time, I wanted to put my arm on your shoulder and tell you everything's going to be okay. <laughs> You're right. It is. I am definitely pouring my heart out in that one. I'm not sure if it is going to be okay, but thank you. I nearly cried then. Thanks, Visit Hole. <laughs> I can't believe the whole tourist board is giving me relationship and emotional advice. Yes, uh, Kelsey asks if there's any Irish influence other than Finn Lizzie. Definitely Rory Gallagher. I was listening to him a lot, and, I've, and that, that's, he's the main reason why I've sort of started playing a bit more slide guitar. I love his guitar playing. It's awesome. Should cover Queen. It's a hard life. Down with freedom. This is a sticky situation. Um... It's a Hard Life is the, that's the one that's got the video that uh, Tim Pope made when he's wearing, wearing the sort of wig with the, the huge mullet, the red cat suit with all the eyeballs on it. It's a classic. Good, good call, actually. Please make whatever moves necessary to make the hot, get the Hot Leg album on Spotify. Massively awesome record, and the world of Spotify needs it. Thanks, Davey. I, uh, a few people have said that to me, and I just can't be bothered. What do I need to do? Uh, maybe I'll find out. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, Derek's asking about my white Les Paul if it was damaged in the water uh, spray event. I don't think that was water. It was beer. That was the reason. That was why I was pissed off because I'm a recovering alcoholic, obviously. I don't want to be covered in some other cunt's beer. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I don't. I just, want to, uh, I just want to get on with my life and enjoy um, where am I, asks Gary, Gary Malia. I tell you, I'm in Tempe, just next to the um, Phoenix International Airport. Yes, Luke, there is a lot of traffic behind me. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's like watching ants. Yes, uh, Mr. Kite. Um, uh, the money that we that was thrown on stage at Belfast was collected up by our merchandiser Joe, and she donated it to uh, the Mayhew Cats Home. So there you go. Um, I haven't watched the Kanye documentary, um, but uh, I don't know. I've, I sort of I have mixed feelings about Kanye. Um, I don't like a lot of his music. Um, but I do appreciate the phenomenon of him and also how prolific he is. And I, I heard some stuff that he was doing with uh, Rick Rubin that I thought was really, really out there and quite interesting. Neil Goldsmith, super chat, thank you. Um, the band Blackberry Smoke, I, I know somebody uh, who, who works for them actually and he says great things about them, but I've yet to check them out properly. Um, What's on? <laughs> Geroid Fihiradai uh, says, Do you have any interest in occult texts or esoteric writings? Not really, I have to admit. Um, oh, look at this question. Dangler Ross says, do you like Huey Lewis and the News? No, I love Huey Lewis and the News. Um, JS says, hi Justin, my name is Justin too, but I also get called Jason a lot. Does this happen to you? Yeah, it happens a lot actually. It's weird. Sometimes I call myself Jason, it just saves time. Um, Wicket says, Justin, please, can you adopt me? Look at this adorable, um, profile picture of Wicket from Return of the Jedi, which I saw when I was six years old, I think, in the cinema. Nice one, Sarah. Thank you. It's nice to see you as well. Appreciate everybody for coming. Thank you. Um, Lex Rad says, I saw your writing credits when I listened to Everything Will Be All Right in the End by Weezer. That's dope. What do you think about them? Um, 
Weezer's a really interesting band, I think. Um, I, I love the way um, I love the way he uh, writes. I think he's super melodic, and I also really appreciate the sort of um, sub. He has this kind of talent that isn't like right in your face. He's a really, really good, interesting guitar player, um, and the way they treat guitars and sort of change the tuning slightly on one side so it makes the, the sort of spatial stereo image much more acute um, in their recordings and just, I don't know, I think they're synonymous with diesel amps that do that one thing really, really well. It's like an amp that that they are, I don't know, they're just sort of really melodic and he's a really interesting person, really thoughtful person as well. I liked it. I enjoyed doing that. Um, Mo Eklund says, Super chat. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate it. Do I like Opeth? Um, actually, yeah, I do. There's some, there's some Opeth that I really like, um, Todd. Thanks for asking. Um, I know they've got a very, a very varied oeuvre, and some of it ranges from like the, the sort of shouty metal stuff to the really interesting um, progressive music. And I, I, prefer, I prefer the progressive, softer stuff that they do, but it's great. Uh, Stephen says, Justin, Turkey enjoyed watching you enjoy whilst playing your music. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means, but thanks. Do you think the darkness are taking for taking too much joy and not taking their fantastic musicianship too serious? Well, you know, musicianship is, you know, music is a language, isn't it? You're supposed to express yourself or an idea or a concept or whatever. Um, and if it's sort of if there's humour coming across, it's just because of who we are and the stuff that turns us on is making each other laugh. I suppose. What? How did you? What do you recommend to open your vocal range? I think it's it's very natural, but you just just got to be careful with it. Really, make sure you warm up properly. Um, try not to sing too hard straight out the gate, and just uh, don't be disheartened if it feels like you can't hit a note because a lot of the time it is psychological. You can. If you're focusing on something totally different, you can actually hit hit notes that you wouldn't have expected to. And if you if you're really overthinking it in the in the run up to a note, you've got no chance of getting it, whether it's a high one or a low one. So um, you can you can find that your range is really restricted by self doubt. So I think you've just got to believe in yourself and uh, just try not to do too much too soon. Um, have you ever been to Memphis? I've definitely been to Memphis, but I haven't been to Graceland, unfortunately. Um, Saw you in Detroit in uh, 2004. Moved here in 05. I'm not aware of a show here. If not, you'd love Sun and Stax. Um, thank you. Um, we were in Detroit and um, we went to the museum. Had a really great time. And we invited the people from the museum to come to the show. And then they had a great time. It was just a brilliant day. Um, don't forget, uh, look at the description. There's links to uh, Tickets for the Darkness. We're on tour in America. That's why I'm here. It current, tonight's um, Tempe in Arizona. Tomorrow it's Santa Ana, uh, which I think is California, isn't it? And then LA and all the other stuff up that coast. And then we're going to go to Canada and back down the other side. Um, but yeah, all the dates are, are in, in. If you follow the link in the description, you'll find all the stuff you need. Um, ah, punished. Sorry, Stephen says, now we're here again. Thoughts on Dan being one of the most underrated guitarists in rock and roll? Yes, I would, be, I would not be comfortable getting on stage with anybody else. And as certainly as a rhythm guitarist, I don't think he's, he can be surpassed in this day and age. Since Malcolm passed away, there's no one better in my, in my opinion. Hi, I've never heard the darkness. I'm a YouTube fan. Your voice is so calming and inspired me to pick up guitar myself. Thank you, BVA3016. I really appreciate that. Um, keep coming back. Um, does the darkness have a talk box riff part in a, in a song? If so, what is it? Every band has at least one. Yeah. <laughs> That's really true. Talk box, you mean the thing when you... Is that when you play a guitar and then you have a tube and it goes into your mouth and then the guitar sound is sent into your mouth and you articulate that sound back into another microphone? Oh, no, no, no. It's a Bon Jovi thing, isn't it? We haven't used it yet, but we should certainly do that. People used to say I looked a bit like um, Peter Frampton, so I, sh I probably should. Um, would you consider doing a big love rock duet as a solo artist, and who would be your favourite female partner? That is a fucking brilliant question. 
Celestina. Um, I'll do one with Kelsey. That's it. When she writes to me. Um, who, who would be good? I mean, Tina. I'd love to do a Tina, but then Ad, um, Brian Adams has done that, hasn't he? I don't know. Who are the big rock voices? I think Dorothy's very good, isn't she? Um, DMC Big D26. Do you think age 45 is too old to start a band and sell music? No, it's not old enough. I think if you're 45, your audience probably is inclined to buy music. So good luck out there and uh, never surrender. If you're doing it, um, if you're doing it to sell music, it doesn't matter how old you are. That's a, that's the wrong reason to do it. Do it because you love music. Other people will love it too. That's that's my advice. Just do it for the for the music, man. Do you like LCD sound system? Loving your videos over the last few months. Thank you, Chip Chop. Um, I don't know much about LCD sound system. I've worked with a few of their people, namely a lighting guy, weirdly. Um, but yeah, if you can use the comment section in any of my videos to alert me to what I should be listening to, I'll, I'll listen to it. And if it's appropriate, I'll react to it too. Um, thoughts on Jane's Addiction? First EP, brilliant. Follow-up album's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I used to love Jane's Addiction, actually, when they first came out. Really loved it. We played with them once um, at a party, an MTV party at the Brixton Academy a long time ago. It's great. Uh, Davey says, you once said you weren't fond of the Hot Cakes album. I think that's just because of the nature of the relationships that we had. You know, Some great guitar playing on it, of course, obviously, and the melodies are awesome, because that's what we do, you know. Mm. Kinsey Lee, thank you. Kinsey King, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Will you play Million Dollar Strong live again? I really love that song. I, I think it's got a good melody. Um, something cool about it. And like the riff's a little bit sort of like, you know, Cod Van Halen or something. So I'm into it. Um, yes, Ariel, I'm sure we can arrange for you to do some photos for us at some point. Just get in touch um, with, uh, use the, you know, use the, Use the description section. There's links there to everything you need. Um, Darkness are on the road for the next two months or six weeks, however long it is. Um, keep coming back. Thank you so much for all of your support. I'm sorry I was a little bit late. It's, it kept saying that there was an error trying to broadcast. So, um, I uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you at one of these shows. And if I don't, I'll see you next time I do one of these lovely um, broadcasts. I enjoyed this. Thanks for all of your questions. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, sign up for the alerts, whatever I'm supposed to say at this point. I'm not sure what my housekeeping looks like on a day like this. Um, yes, I'm looking forward to Toronto. Yeah, awesome. Okay, guys, I'm going to call this a day. Um, thank you so much. I'll see some of you guys in Tempe tonight, and I'll see the rest of you over the next few weeks. Um, lots of love to you. See you on the ice, and adieu. I'll do a sound effect. Hang on, where are they? Where are the oh, here we go. Ready? Where are the sound effects? No, where is it? No. <laughs> what are we talking about the sound effects? Window. Here we go. Window. Sound effects. Here we go, guys. This is going to work. <laughs> Night, guys. See you on the ice. <laughs>